I mean, who wants to work for Google when they could make the next Google? I entered at Google so many times. I am a Google intern. What's up, y'all? It's a Fuego. Today, I want to talk about my experience as an intern in industry and ultimately why my internships led me to apply to the PhD program. To some people, industry seems like a dream job. To other people, it's definitely overrated. I don't necessarily agree with either of those perspectives. In fact, even though I do want to be a professor, I can't entirely rule out the possibility of an industry career in the future. The reason why I chose to go to grad school was specifically because of the project work that I was able to do as an intern and what I speculated that I'd be able to do as a full-time employee. So so today I'm going to talk about my internship experiences at IBM and Google, and maybe this can help you figure out whether or not grad school is right for you. The first couple things I want to touch upon are goals and interests. As an undergrad, I didn't realize I wanted to be in computer science until late in my freshman year. As my goals and interests became clear, my internship showed me that I wouldn't actually be able to pursue a lot of my interests if those interests didn't support a product or service that my employer was interested in, or unless I was a part of a research team. I actually did one research internship, and this is probably the biggest factor and me being confident about pursuing a PhD. But let me actually break down each of the projects I did as an intern and kind of explain what I felt was missing during the experience. So my first internship was at IBM and the project that I ended up working on was a file server that was based on a Linux system on an ARM embedded board. This was the first time I'd ever worked on an embedded system and way before I was a Linux enthusiast. It was actually a pretty decent experience, but it wasn't really related to any of the classes that I had taken or any interests that I actually had at the time. But in a lot of industry positions, you don't actually end up doing work related to what you specialized in as an undergrad. And while at the time I didn't know that I wanted to study AI, I definitely knew that I didn't want to do this. After that, I got my first internship at Google. And after that coding interview, I never really wanted to do a coding interview again. So after each summer, I was offered a return internship and I took it. As a result, I ended up doing five consecutive internships at Google or Alphabet companies, I guess. In fact, I entered at Google so many times that I was in this Google intern promo video. I am a Google intern. And just a sidebar on salary, at IBM, I'm pretty sure I got paid hourly. I don't really know what it was, maybe 18 to 25, maybe even 30 an hour. But at Google, interns actually get paid salary. So my first few years, I think my base salary was like $80,000 prorated over the three months. But as I kept doing internships, my salary ended up being a base salary that was six figures. So the projects that I did at Google were all related to AI and hardware which is definitely my niche. So I can't really say that the projects were bad experiences. My first internship was in Cambridge and I worked on hotel ads. And basically the code that I wrote was a MapReduce framework that essentially tried to figure out errors in hotel listings. Most of that work really combined big data with some simple AI algorithms. Can't say that I wanted to work for hotel ads after that. So my second internship was a little bit different. I actually worked in phone testing. And so we ended up using a large robotic arm that had a little fingertip on it and a camera and essentially it would be able to touch phones and press different keys and I wrote a machine learning app that would be able to detect states between different key presses to essentially detect the latency of pressing a key on a keyboard. It worked pretty well and it was honestly pretty enjoyable but I didn't want to work in device testing forever. So my next internship I really tried to get a project related to my interests and at that time it was virtual reality. So during that internship I actually used the Google Cardboard which is a really low cost virtual reality headset and I tried to do a feature tracking algorithm that would allow somebody to walk around in a virtual reality environment and have the same position or translation that they made in the real world. It didn't work very well, but it was still a really great experience. So for my next internship, I specifically stated that I wanted to get into hardware. I was super into doing hardware projects. And honestly, after all of these AI-based internships, I was kind of sick of doing AI work in industry. The internship that I did was at Verily, which was actually Google Life Sciences at the very beginning of the summer that I worked there. I think it was right when Alphabet first became a thing. And you know, it was really great hardware experience, but I also realized that I didn't want to solder and burn my fingers and my nails and things like that forever. That honestly helped me realize that even though I was doing an EE master's degree, I was still much more in the computer scientist at heart. My very last internship was actually a research internship, and I wanted to see if I would have a better experience doing a research internship instead of a software engineering internship. You know, maybe I did want to work in industry, but just not doing software engineering. For that internship, I actually worked on data-driven machine learning models, but the data sets I was using had noisy labels, meaning 
mean that if an object was classified as something, say a cat, it might not actually have been a cat. This was fully a research project. They didn't really have a direction that they wanted me to take. They wanted me to just take the problem and try to find a solution for it. Kind of how I do in my PhD research now. But still at its core, its purpose was to eventually be applied to a product. And at Google, this product is their search engine. If I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really excited about the work that I was doing in all of these internships. I was definitely excited by the paycheck, just not so much excited by the projects. When you're a Google intern, it's kind of like a paradise. You can probably spend like three to four hours doing real work a day and three to four hours gallivanting around, attending events, going doing fun things on Google's campus. I think full-time employees definitely work much harder than interns, but an industry company like Google definitely has that flexibility built in. Your project scope is pretty well-defined. And if you're a fast programmer, you can definitely get away with spending only a few hours a day writing code. As a full-time employee, you'll definitely have much more work, but the idea of working on these tightly packaged product focused projects was really stressful to me. I didn't wanna be stuck doing this forever. While I'll say that my experiences as an intern definitely affected my perception of working in the industry, I'll also say that my perception of my internship experiences was significantly influenced by my time at Stanford, specifically the engineering programs that I participated in. One of the programs I participated in was the Stanford Summer Engineering Academy, otherwise known as C. This is a program that rising freshmen go to at Stanford where you can learn math and computer science. It's really designed for aspiring engineers. At that time, I wanted to be a chemical engineer, so it made sense for me to participate in this program. And this program was led by a very eccentric dean at Stanford. And I think one of the things that this dean said was that if you didn't get a PhD, you owed him your firstborn child. It was definitely a joke, but I think that this put it in my mind that a PhD was possible, that you could aim for more. I think that being in this program made me feel like the PhD was attainable. That normal graduating from undergrad, getting a job, I didn't actually have to go down that route. I knew what a PhD was before then, but I never actually saw it as a possibility for myself. And because at this program, I saw so many examples of PhD candidates who went on to become professors or start companies or do all of these amazing things, even work in industry, I kind of felt like, yeah, maybe a PhD might be the right decision for me. I mean, who wants to work for Google when they could make the next Google, obviously. The point was that I was exposed to a future that was greater than just graduating, getting a software engineering job and working in industry forever. Not saying that software engineering isn't a great career. In fact, software engineering can be a very fulfilling and lucrative career because let's be real, professors are not getting paid millions of dollars, at least not as a base salary. While software engineering can definitely be a fulfilling career, I was really excited at the possibility of building things that didn't exist, whether that be in research or in industry. I don't necessarily think this means more money, but it definitely means more flexibility within your career. And so I guess that's the main reason why I decided to pursue the PhD. I had a really deep desire for career flexibility. But if you want a flexible career as a computer scientist, you have to be significantly self-motivated. Being a PhD student is very much self-motivated and self-managed. In industry research, there may still be that pressure to show up every day, work a bunch of hours, and be very productive towards product goals. I really enjoy that as a PhD student, I can spend a lot of time thinking very deeply about problems and also building novel applications that are really entirely motivated by my personal scientific interests. That's not something that I would have been able to do in industry. Eventually, I do want to become a professor and I do want to start a deep technology startup that uses the research that I've done. I've also been lucky enough to see that this is a possibility as I've gone through my own startup experience at my company Parfait, which is a company I started with my sister and some of our friends. We use AI to make wigs like the wig I'm wearing right now, myparfait.com, shameless plug. If you think I'm cute, go buy one. But I wouldn't have been able to have this startup experience if I was working a normal industry nine to five job because as a PhD student, since I have such a flexible schedule, I do have the time to focus on my research and focus on my company. It's extremely hard to pursue your own venture when you're working nine to five, climbing up the corporate ladder. Even if I graduate and go on to be a professor, there's still so many opportunities to patent my work and spin off different startups that are related to my research. You know, I could still do industry research after I finish my PhD. I could actually even be a professor and still work in industry. The professors at MIT who actually lead research groups at Google. You really don't have to be placed in the software engineering box forever if you don't wanna be. With a PhD, you actually don't have to be placed in 
any box, really. And I think that's the beauty of doing a PhD, at least in computer science. And yes, startups do provide an exorbitant amount of pressure, but I'm gonna argue that industry also provides an extreme amount of pressure. So I guess the ultimate reason why I decided to pursue the PhD is so that I have the technical knowledge to decide for myself what I want to build. For me, that freedom and flexibility is priceless. So that's it for this video. I promise that I will soon be back with my more technical coding type videos. Unless you actually enjoy these kind of talking, you know, general education and career videos. If you do, like my pinned comment below. If you have a strong opinion, comment down below what videos you prefer me to make or what kind of ratio between talking videos and coding videos you'd like to see on this channel. Yeah, that's it for this video and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.